get started. So welcome everyone to today's webinar. I'm Stacey King and I manage the Commuter of Choice Maryland program. Uh, today's webinar topic is all about how you can win your commute with the Incentive app. And we are very excited to have Dan Sheehan uh, joining us today from the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments to share some updates with you. Next slide goes. Uh, okay, so today um, Dan is going to cover, um, he'll give us a refresher on the Incentive app, and then he'll also catch us up on some of the uh, new exciting features that have been implemented in the last few months that aim to enhance our commuting experiences, give us more ways to think about commuting to work, and reward us in new ways uh, for our choices. Just some quick reminders about uh, today's webinar. Uh, the webinar session is being recorded and the recording and the slides will be available within a few days on the Commuter Choice website, which you can get to at commuterchoicemaryland.com. Uh, please drop your questions at any point in time in the chat and uh, we'll be sure to address them at the end. And uh, just a very quick plug for Commuter Choice Maryland. Uh, in case you don't know about us, we are a free program that is operated through the Maryland Department of Transportation. We help employers build commuter benefits programs. We administer commuter programs and incentives statewide, and we promote commuting options. Uh, some of the major programs that we administer include the Maryland Commuter Tax Credit, which gives businesses a 50% um, credit for uh, offering qualifying commuter subsidies. We also administer the Employer Partner Program, which offers statewide recognition to employers who do offer commuter benefits. And we have been involved in implementing the statewide expansion of Incentrip so that um, commuters all across Maryland can now use it. Uh, and I just want to say that, you know, Commuter Choice Maryland is a statewide program, but we operate in very close collaboration with transportation program specialists that are managing commuter programs in 11 counties and Baltimore City. So no matter where you are in Maryland, you have access to a great network of free resources and support to help with your um, commuting programs and options. Now, I'd like to also introduce you to Commuter Connections, which is a program of the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments. Commuter Connections is a network of transportation organizations in the D.C. metropolitan area, which covers all of Washington, D.C. and jurisdictions in Virginia and Maryland. Uh, they offer a lot of great free programs. Um, hopefully you have heard of them and hopefully you're participating. Uh, but some of the major ones are Guarantee Ride Home, Free Ride Matching. Um, there's also Pool Rewards and Carpool Now, which offer financial incentives for carpooling and van pooling. Um, and they run some really great events throughout the year. So uh, Bike to Work Day in May, Car Free Day in September, and uh, the Employer Awards, which just took place in June. And then, of course, they also uh, manage the Incentive Program. Um, so please, if you haven't ever checked out their website, please go to commuterconnections.org at some point in the near future and see what kind of programs are, um, are available to you. So. Um, Bringing us all these great Incentrip updates today is Dan Sheehan, the Transportation Program Operations Manager with the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments. Dan joined COG in 2018 and helps manage the Commuter Connections Program. He assists with the day-to-day -day operations for programs including ride matching, guaranteed ride home, enhanced mobility, and of course, Incentrip. Prior to joining COG, Dan led the efforts to completely rethink transportation demand management in Ohio, where he was recognized for his efforts with a 40 under 40 award for the Association for Commuter Transportation. So I am going to now turn it over um, to Dan and I will thank you in advance for your patience while we switch over our controls. Okay. All right, thank you, Stacey. Just a quick check, is my audio coming in and is the uh, PowerPoint slide presented? Uh, let's see. I see your screen and I can hear you just fine. Excellent, all right. Well, thank you so much for that kind introduction and thank you to everyone for being here today. I'm excited to spend the next few minutes discussing separate with this group and trying to uh, kind of convey the basics of the app as well as how it works, uh, how it can be used at employer work sites, or even just um, for individual commuters who are looking to kind of put some fun into their commute. Um, you know it's not everyone's favorite thing in the world to commute to and from work, but we try and make it uh, something interesting and something 
um, to you know, reward yourself uh, for those commutes with this application. So let's jump right in. There we go. All right, so quick overview of Incentrip. It's a free app available both uh, for Android and iOS, so iPhone. It covers commutes to and from the Washington, D.C., Northern and Central Virginia, and all of Maryland areas. Uh, like Stacy said, the Maryland expansion was relatively recent. That came about, I think, in 2021. Um, it was originally launched in uh, the D.C. area market in um, fall of 2019, so before the pandemic. We uh, received a lot of attention and a lot of initial usership uh, from commuters in the D.C. region before the pandemic. And as everyone knows, that just upended about everything in life uh, over the last few years because of COVID. And we've seen some steady growth uh, from that um, bottoming out part of the application, or part, or excuse me, bottoming out in 2020. And it's been growing ever since, uh, getting, getting closer to where we used to be in 2019 in terms of user show. So Incentrip exists to help individuals plan their trips, primarily their work commutes, so to and from work. It also works for uh, casual trips, leisure trips, whatever you might you know, be going from A to B in destination in that geography I mentioned earlier. Uh, it can help you plan those trips, and I'll get into that detail a little bit more later on in the presentation. For commutes, our eligible window is weekdays from 6.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. So you know, you've got your morning commute and your evening commute. Um, if you want to earn points and redeem them for rewards, those are the times where you would have to be uh, logging your trips in a centric during the weekdays. Uh, for every trip that's logged and eligible, you earn, earn points and redeem those points for cash and other rewards, which I'll get into more detail in the coming slides. So first, some core functionality of the application. Uh, a couple slides on that. We, I wanted to highlight the trip planning feature, and this is basically the critical element of Instant Trip to, to, that makes it possible to gamify and reward commuters who use it. So at its core, it is a trip planning app. Uh, when a commuter signs up to participate in Instant Trip, they will enter their origin and destination in the application, which is that screenshot on the left. I've got my home and work pre-programmed into the app, which is why it shows it as such in the white windows towards the top of the first screenshot. Um, but you could put any address in there and it would recognize it as long as it's in that service area, the, the Maryland and DC service area. Um, when it's calculating your, I guess, ideal route, if you will, uh, the trip planning features account for real-time data that include current traffic conditions, accidents that might have closed roads, work zones, special events, weather, and even real-time transit in Maryland, which was a new feature in 2021. So all the local transit agencies in Maryland um, are, are that the MTA provides us, as well as Mulata, um, are real-time as long as um, they're able to provide that, that service we plugged into their GTFS feeds. So um, that's one improvement if you've been following Incentive for your length of time, uh, 2021 when we rolled that out. So based on those factors and your inputs for origin and destination, the app will suggest trip options based on your preferred, preferred mode of travel. So you can select a biking option, walking, uh, multimodal, driving alone, if, if you don't, don't have any other options available, carpooling. Um, and as you can see on the, at, on the screenshot at the right, Below, the, the trip will award you points based on the mode that you choose. It'll let you know, you know how much fuel you, that might be used as part of your trip um, and also the length of time. So just some helpful information as you go about considering which mode to take to get from A to B. Um, more on trip logs here. Once you complete a trip, and you're, if it's eligible for points, um, you'll be shown how many points you've earned. It all gets stored in the app under the My Trips menu. Uh, so at this point, you know, this is when you start logging your trips over time, uh, accumulating points and redeeming them from awards, which I'll get into in a bit. Um, your trips themselves are private um, to you. As an individual commuter, we do not share that information with any third parties. It stays in-house here at Community Connections. 
and any of our, of course, our software developers who work on the app can see that as well to assist us with troubleshooting. But any kind of data shared beyond community connections is in the aggregate form, um, you know, explaining things like we had X number of commuters logging trips on these dates, you know, something like that. You want to be very careful to communicate to uh, anyone using the app that we do not use this information outside of Incentra uh, because we want you to feel comfortable logging trips and knowing that it's not going anywhere or being sold anywhere. So once trips are logged, they're all stored and classified here. You can, as the screenshot on the right shows, kind of um, determine the purpose of the trip as well. Kind of just keeps you uh, up to date on what you've logged and um, reconcile with your point total as well. So points. Um, the purpose of an Ascent trip, of course, is to help you make informed decisions about how you travel from A to B. And the more, I guess, fun element of Incentrip is awarding points for, for choosing modes that um, are, might be considered more sustainable or more eco-friendly than other modes. So this screen, or excuse me, this, this slide uh, kind of gets into that a little bit. We award points for one morning and one evening commute trip uh, per day. So you have two opportunities to earn points uh, every weekday. Again, that's from 6.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. and from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. are peak um, traffic windows. And the reason for this uh, constraint of only earning points for commutes in, in those windows is because the trip is one of the, the major goals is to reduce congestion on the roads. And the best way to reduce congestion is to target the peak periods to get cars off the road during peak periods. And our allocation, point allocation model kind of uh, exhibits that down here. So. If you're taking, if you look at the table at the bottom of the slide, if you're taking a non-SOV trip, uh, which is, you know, rideshare, carpool, ample transit, biking, walking, um, you'll get more points than if you drive alone and drive in an eco-friendly matter manner. Um, so under the, the second column, the initial phase, uh, we award 100 points per trip for individuals who have signed up for the app and are using it for the first 90 days after their sign up. It's our most generous points offering period, uh, mostly because we are attempting to encourage individuals to form a habit of taking sustainable modes of transportation. Again, that's that ride sharing, transit, biking, walking, getting out of a single occupant vehicle to improve the efficiency of the roadways and also improve the air quality. So that's why we award the most points during that period. Over the course of time, as that becomes habit for the individual, uh, those point values do diminish. So that's where those sustained one, two, and three tiers come into play. Um, and the reason we, ha we have to diminish those points is simply uh, funding limitations and um, addressing our core goal for the, of this app is to, to get people to try new sustainable modes of transportation. So if you're sustaining that sustainable mode, we are, uh, grateful for that and we'll continue to reward you. It just won't be at the same level as it takes to get you to make a new habit and make that behavior change um, for choosing to get out of your drive alone vehicle and into um, those non SOV options listed on the slide. So once you earn your points, um, they stay associated with your account and, and the uh, community connections program or the MDOT program. Um, you can see those two programs kind of highlighted on the screenshot on the right. Um, those are the two primary programs in Incentive at the moment. Uh, you are participating in the Commuter Connections program if you're working in the DC area and you can uh, or participate in the Maryland program if you work somewhere in Maryland outside of the DC area. So um, likely everyone attending this or viewing this webinar will qualify for one of the two programs. They're both very similar. They have a nearly identical rewards um, and a similar point structure as well. So what I'm going to communicate here is, is um, basically the same for both programs. So as a commuter logs their trips, um, as we just went over, they are earning points and they're making those points for one of the two programs. Think of it as like a um, credit card rewards program almost. You know, you, if you have a rewards credit card, you're probably familiar with um, getting points for your purchases and then you bank them up and then you redeem them for a reward from your credit card company. That's the same model that we've used here. So as you're logging your trips, you bank your points. And once you get to 
a certain threshold, you can redeem those points for one of these prizes listed on this slide. Um, so we have a number of different options available uh, for redemption. You can get a check as a commuter. We can deposit funds into your PayPal account. We'll send you a gift card or a NIFT gift, which is basically a, a gift card for local vendors in the DC and Maryland area. Uh, we'll deposit credits onto your Smart Trip account, or we can even give you some credits toward Easy Pass as well. And the dollar increments are all shown there on the right side of the screen and on the screenshot. Uh, most are either 10, are either 10, 25, or 50 dollar rewards that we'll give out. Um, and I think the corresponding point values for each, you could bank a thousand points and earn $10, 2,000 points for $25, or 3,500 points for $50 or, or for, for most of those rewards there. They, they pretty much all follow that, follow that same model. I do want to note though for Easy Pass right now, it's only available in Virginia, although we're working to expand that to Maryland as well. Uh, we're also trying to get Charm Pass uh, included as well as capital bike share. So those hopefully will be coming uh, soon to our reward store in Centro. So when a commuter redeems their points for these rewards, um, we, we at Commuter Connections will fulfill those rewards and either mail it to them or uh, automatically deposit it in their respective accounts if it's one of our transportation partners or PayPal. We're capped at $600 per year. We've had no one meet that cap in the I guess, how long has it been? Almost like three years or so we've been operating this program. Um, due to the, the model that we outlined earlier, um, if someone were to log a commute trip every weekday of the year, they would come very close to that $600 maximum. And I'll show you how they can do that with by earning bonus points as well in the next few slides here. Recently, in December 2022, we launched a new quarter level challenge feature. So these challenges are unique to specific corridors in the region and they offer bonus points uh, for commuters who travel along particularly congested corridors. In Maryland right now we've identified I-270 as the eligible corridor for uh, bonus points. And so if a commuter travels along I-270, you know, if they're coming down, for example, from Frederick to DC or somewhere from Montgomery County to DC and they're traveling those, during those commute, peak commute times, if you take a bus that goes along that route, if you carpool along that route um, and sign up for one of these challenges, it's a public challenge and you'll earn uh, a couple hundred points uh, for participating in that challenge on top of the triple F points that you'll already you know, have earned by, by logging your trip. So it's a great way to um, increase the value of your point totals as you're logging trips in the same trip if you participate on one of these corridors. The other corridor we've identified is I-66 um, in the Commuter Connections region. I think uh, MDOT program has a few others as well, in, including some on I-95 over the Bay Bridge and on I-695. Uh, so commuters participating in the MDOT program will get bonus points for those corridors as well. And these can change over time. Uh, based on feedback or you know, construction schedules and such, if we need to implement a specific TD, TDM or um, congestion mitigation campaign for these uh, for roadways in the region, we can focus it on a particular corridor. We've also integrated our Flex Time Rewards program into Incentrip back in December 2022. Uh, individuals can register for this program in Incentrip, and if they travel on one of the corridors listed on this screen, um, they will be eligible to earn enough points for the equivalent of eight dollars each time you flex a trip on one of these corridors. It's a, a bit more nuanced than what the slide makes it up to be. You've got to, it depends on the congestion levels on any given day. So if an individual has signed up for the program in a trip uh, for, for the Flex and Rewards program, that is, they have to opt into receiving flex time alerts, um, and the system will notify an individual if there's excess levels of congestion on one of these routes, and if so, they can choose to delay their trip or um, depart earlier before the congestion is expected to be bad. Um, so that way, if you're traveling along that route, you're not part of the peak period congestion and hopefully making it easier for everybody else to um, get through the, 
get through that quarter if they cannot flex their trip. So we'll give you 650 points if you do flex your trip, which is the equivalent to about $8 or so. And here's some screenshots on how that works. Um, you know, you'll get, it's all the purple text is followed all the way through. Um, so on the left side, uh, it says take flexible trips to reduce peak level congestion and earn more incentives. If you select the time you want to depart, the 8.30 at 9. It'll save that to your profile and then monitor your um, location. And then if you do depart around that time, and the middle screen shows you that you'll get that 650 points. And then it's got its own um, categorization in your trip blocks on the right screen uh, of flex trips. We also introduced real-time travel alerts, kind of in addition to the flex time alerts feature. These alerts occur along flex time quarters and will let you know if there's heavy congestion. So even if you don't flex your trip, um, you'll get these alerts. You'll also get alerts for any weather events that might uh, adversely affect driving conditions along corridors. And we built it in a way where it could integrate future fact or fact other factors in the future, such as accidents or construction, um, give you pop-up notifications and you know if there's significant delays on your route uh, proactively. Um, instead of planning your trip and then finding out that way. The final program I wanted to hit on that's relatively new is the Employer Rewards Program. Uh, this allows employers to create and deploy customized commute programs for their employees. So employers can conduct basic program administration through special permissions in our Commuter Connections TDM system. Um, where they can build their own employer challenge, uh, populate rewards in their employer store that are only available to their employees. So this is a, a great feature if you've got a work site where you know parking might be sparse or you're calling people back to the office and maybe they're grumbling a bit about that, you can create a, a, a rewards program here where employees can log their trips um, and based on the points that you uh, that they earn through log logging those trips uh, as part of the specific program to you know, those employees. Um, they'll earn those points and they'll redeem them for rewards um, populated by the employer. What's kind of nice about the employer rewards program is that you can, as an employer, customize those rewards so they can be unique to your work site. You, know, you can get things like preferred parking. If, you're the, if they're carpooling as a reward, you can um, you have PTO, or you can do something basic and, and simple, which is still effective, you know, Amazon gift card or any generic retailer gift card to your employees. And that is on top of um, the Commuter Connections and MDOT program. So these people, your employees would uh, be getting you know, quite a bit of reward for using Incentrip and commuting and, and, and choosing sustainable modes. Uh, if you are interested or if you know someone who's interested in setting up an employee rewards program, our contact information is there on the bottom bullet of this slide. Or you can, uh, at the end of this presentation, as well, you can contact me directly. Here's just some screenshots of how uh, this kind of flows. So on the far left, uh, we've got American University is not participating. It's just you know, a sample we set up. They, they were a pilot participant uh, a couple of years ago when we were first developing this. Um, but, you know, they can create challenges, they've created a bike to work day challenge or a ride share month challenge you know, on the left screen you can see there, but they're giving their employees points for additional points for trip logs, I should say. Uh, once they accept the challenge on the middle screen, they'll earn those points and on the right screen, um, you can see since this is just a test, we were giving a high five as a reward for someone who earned 150 points through this employer challenge, but of course you can Use your imagination to populate that with rewards that will be impactful and effective for employees to uh, participate in this program. All right, so with that, Stacy, I can turn it back to you to field any questions, or I can field questions as well. Sure, thanks, Dan. Uh, that was very good, very informative. Thank you. I see that we looks like we do have a few questions. Um, let me figure out how to get them easily. So uh, I think the first question that appeared was, um, will sending kids to school by walking or biking be qualified for awards? A uh, good question. No, it will not uh, because it's the rewards are specifically focused on um, commutes to work sites. So logging your, um, if, if children use the app and they 
were to log a trip to the school, they would not get points, but they are, of course, welcome to use the app if they wish to help them figure out the best way to get to the school. That makes sense. Um, would you like to use this as an opportunity for a school pool plug? <laughs> School, uh, like using incentive to, or the, the school, um, the school pool program. I mean, <laughs> oh yeah, good idea. Um, we do operate a separate school pool program here at Commuter Connections, and it's got its own system and interface that's independent of all of our other programs. Uh, specific, you know, mostly because it, it is sensitive data, and we actually work with parents of children as opposed to children themselves, obviously. Uh, looking to share the ride to schools throughout the region. So, and if any schools want to participate, um, they are welcome to contact us using my information at the end of this presentation, which I guess I should go to, um, or our general ride matching uh, at nwcog.org email address and get them set up in school. Cool, thanks. <laughs> um, okay, uh, second question that, um, Popped up, uh, what is the advantage or special features of the app over other trip planning applications available to the public like Google Maps? So I think in terms of trip planning, it'll be very similar to other third-party apps out there like Google Maps. Uh, I, Google Maps now does a good, generally good job of accommodating real-time traffic, traffic information. I would say this and Centric app is a little more sophisticated in that it uses hyperlocal data to generate those those routes. Um, so that's one advantage. But the, the the primary advantage is actually being able to almost you know in a way get paid for your commute as a commuter. Um, so if you're traveling and you're you know looking to make the most of it uh, during your commute to and from the office, yeah, we'll. we'll award you points and you can redeem those points for cash or other incentives if you would like. Awesome, thank you. Uh, and uh, next question that popped up, um, what determines when a bike trip is worth 31, 32, or 33 points some days and others 50 points? Are there days where um, points are different uh, for, for logging trips? That depends on the program you're a part of. For commuter connections, they're consistent in terms of your point uh, threshold, your tier. Let's see if I go back to that slide. Uh, yeah, so for commuter connections, it's just dependent uh, on um, how long you've been a part of the program. And as you can see for bike, it kind of diminishes over time uh, based on 90, 120, 150 or, or more days from 100 to 50 points. The MDOT model is a little more complex. It does factor in time of day, as well as I think current network congestion or activity. Um, I'm not entirely sure what goes into that model to determine the point totals, but I know that it is dynamic and has quite a bit of factors that um, are then aggregated together to determine the point value for the trip. Yeah, that's good, and uh, we can follow up a little bit more on the M dot side too to see if there um, if there are particular instances about that, and uh, see if we can learn a little bit, get a little bit more insight too with the developers. Um, and another uh, another bike related question: Will there be any challenge events for bike commuters similar to those on the commute corridors? Yeah, that's great. We I don't know about corridors that is specific to road, you know, highways almost. Um, but what we have done in the past and what we will hopefully do again in the future is create more generic challenges for the public, um, you know, participants in the, in the community connections or MDOT program. And we did something like this back in 2019 where we, if, if you opted into back to work day, um, you earned a significant, significant amount of bonus points for that day. Um, and I think the primary avenue for awarding um, points based on, based on you know, just general biking might be from the employer rewards program because they'll have more, I guess, ability and, and leeway to customize their rewards to what their employees prefer, whereas our, our public programs are kind of, they're mostly set with a few things added in here and there uh, for the challenges. So um, 
a short answer is yes, we could do some some challenges for biking. I don't think it'd be along the specific corridor, but it'd be more generic and you know, log log trip on the stand or some points. Uh, but that's more likely to happen on the employer rewards feature. Yeah, that's that's great. That'll be a lot of fun if we um, once we can get things like that going. Um, but just uh, so final question, just kind of piggybacking on an employer the employer rewards option. Um, is there, if an employer wanted to start their employer rewards um, program within Incentrip, is there a cost, is there any additional cost to the employer to getting that going? Or um, is that something that they can set up with, you know, no extra cost to them? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it is uh, completely free for employers to set up their program. Uh, we here at Community Connections have um, a team of individuals who will help you uh, get that set up in our system but then the employer um, they do have to I guess not just sponsor but uh, fulfill the rewards themselves so if, you, if the employer is, is saying you know we've got 10 Amazon gift cards or whatever we can populate our store with uh, for those rewards the employer would need to procure those gift cards or coupon codes and uh, they would also be responsible for distributing those for the employees who participated and um, accomplished the challenge and, and redeem the points for those rewards. So uh, you're not, employees, or excuse me, employers are not paying community connections or our staff for um, helping with any type of setup. Um, your, all, your, all your financial commitment would be is to actually provide the rewards. Great. Excellent. Um, I do not see any more questions, um, and that takes us, that's perfect timing because we're um, at the end of our half hour. So um, thank you so much, Dan, for joining us and for giving us all these great updates. Um, I hope that we um, can help more people throughout Maryland and DC and Virginia. <laughs> uh, their commutes, especially as we're, some of us are heading back to work maybe a little more frequently. And um, for anyone in the audience, if you have questions, if you have Dan's information on the screen, um, you're also welcome to reach out to Commuter Choice at any point in time. You can also find all of us on social media. I think uh, Facebook, um, Commuter Choice is on LinkedIn, um, and there's some great Commuter Connections content on Instagram, I believe. So um, you can find us all there. And uh, with that, we will sign off and wish everybody a great afternoon and um, hope to see you all on the next webinar. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Dan. Thank you.